calling to order the municipality of Monroeville's regular council meeting for March 8th, 2022. It is shortly after 7 p.m. If we'd all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Roll call, please. Mayor Greesock. Here. Mr. Hizzy. Here. Mr. Poach. Here. Mr. Stevenson. Here. Mr. Wolfram. Here. Mr. Adams. Here. Mr. Williams. Here. Mr. Biondo. Here. Mr. Little. Here. Mr. Ratcher. Here. Ms. Rock. Here. Mr. Ugas. Here. Mr. Sedlak. Here. Mr. Weldon. Here. Welcome. We're going to start the meeting this evening. We actually, during our public comment period, we're going to start with a presentation uh, by Ernie Groover of the Monroeville Foundation. Thank you, uh, Mayor Greesock and uh, council members. Thank you for having me here today. Uh, as most of you know me already, but if you don't, uh, my name is Ernie Groover. I am president of the Monroeville Foundation. And uh, I'm here today to talk about our plans for 2022. Uh, as you know, the pandemic last year limited the things that we could do as an organization in reference to bringing the community together. So we had to cancel our community day. Uh, we, were, we were able to host our annual jazz festival. Turned out to be the most successful jazz festival in the history of the jazz festival. We had a approximately 3,000 people come up to the community park. And we thank you for allowing us to use the park and to make these events happen for the community. Uh, this year, we're, we're, we're happy to say that uh, we're going to have a community day, uh, July 30th, along with a 5K race, uh, along with our premier sponsor, uh, Forbes Hospital, Allegheny Health Network, and Highmark. Uh, we're looking for a very exciting event this year. We've got some new blood in the uh, helping us plan uh, the event this year. We also have uh, Bob on our, on our board this year, and he's uh, helping us to put things together. So we're really excited about that. So July 30th will be the 5K race along <coughs> with the community day. And we're looking to bring people and businesses together. Uh, that event alone should probably bring in somewhere between two and 3,000 people. So I encourage you to let people know that this event is taking place. Encourage businesses to come out and participate. And if any of you wish to participate, you know, we certainly have a place for you in our booth to meet your constituents. Uh, the next event that we're having would be the Jazz Festival, which will be Labor Day weekend, uh, September 3rd, Saturday, September 3rd. We're in the process of planning that right now. Our golf outing is uh, September 12th. And uh, we're also in the process of planning that. And then our last event for the year is our Great Pumpkin Race. It's a 5K race, and that was very successful last year. We had uh, people dress up in Halloween costumes and things of that nature. So it was a very fun event. Uh, lastly, but not least, uh, the monies that we raise, we're looking to help uh, organizations and people in the community. So if any of you in your wards have uh, an organization or that needs some assistance financially, the monies that we raise, we look to give it out. Uh, no one on our staff is, is paid, it's all voluntary. So uh, we get a lot of pleasure out of uh, being able to help people in the community and the Jazz Festival and Community Day help us bring that together. So thank you and we look forward to your support again this year. Ernie, one, one quick question. Uh, I don't think you gave a date for the pumpkin race. Uh, October 23rd. 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 October yeah. 23rd. Thank you. Thank you. Because mm -hmm. Mr. Stevenson wants to run it, actually. So he's going to start <laughs> training now. He wants to know how much time he has. Actually, <laughs> I, I plan on getting a donation to support that. Thank you, Great. sir. I appreciate yeah. it. Very good. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Groove. Thanks, Great Ernie. job. We really appreciate Thanks, all your time. And Thank uh, you. Thanks for very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we're going to open the floor for public comment on proposed agenda items only. This is your time to speak and, and comment to council 
Only on agenda items, we always ask that you keep your comments to a five minute time frame. Uh, that way we can kind of keep the meeting moving along and hopefully in five minutes you can get your point across. Uh, at the end of the meeting, there's also going to be a, a, a public comment period for any municipal item. So this period is only for items that are on the agenda. So if there's anyone here that would like to speak about the agenda, now would be your time. Welcome. Did you sign in already? I already signed in. My hey. name is David Mintz. Thank you, David. I'm a longtime and rebel resident. And uh, it's been a while since because of COVID, but oh, well, um, I used mm -hmm. to speak to the uh, previous council sometimes. <laughs> um, and Mr. Poach knows me, and mm -hmm. Mr. Ratcher, the mayor, and Mr. Little. Um, I'm coming tonight to speak about motion number one, uh, just so that everybody knows what that is. Uh, on the agenda tonight, uh, motion number one is a motion to award the zoning ordinance review request for proposal agreement to Strategic Solutions LLC with Gateway Engineers, Inc. for the total project sum of $27,584. Um, now, I, I come tonight to just comment on that just uh, because as I, as I I found out about this from watching uh, on the, the video of the Citizens Night on Thursday uh, that this was you know, being discussed. Um, I, well, first of all, I'd like to, to say that I, I think um, as a community member, as a member of Sustainable Monrovo, as a member of uh, a group called Protect PT, which is also a group, if you're unfamiliar with, uh, that, that advocates for the health of the people of Allegheny County as well as Westmoreland County through environmental uh, health and wellness. Um, I, I come tonight to say that uh, I think maybe we've not exhausted yet uh, <clears throat> working with community members um, who are certainly willing, as, as I am, to uh, work completely for free, no cost whatsoever. Um, I can say that I can do this in five minutes easily. Uh, a few years ago, um, uh, through Sustainable Monrovo and with help from a group called Food and Water Watch, um, we submitted a oil and gas ordinance to help update the protections for the people of Monrovo uh, as far as uh, a lot of issues, which I can mention a few of tonight. Um, all the previous council members got that, and now we have a new council. And in the last couple days, uh, I think all of you should have gotten that electronically. Um, and including Mr. Little, right? Did you get it in the last couple of days? No, you didn't. Okay, but um, we did submit it in writing a few years ago. I have a copy right here. Um, and uh, there are certainly some protections that we could work. This is a working document. It was written a few years ago. I can tell you that you know, certainly it's up for discussion. But what happened a few years ago was Mr. Little said that um, in order for his office to even review it, as something that would be discussed and reviewed amongst uh, you know, Monrovo officials, somebody on the council had to champion it. Somebody had to ask his office to look at it. And at the time, nobody was willing. Um, it is a, um, almost completely new council today. We still have uh, one person on council, Mr. Poach, but everybody else I uh, hadn't spoken to before. I'm hoping that somebody would be willing to ask Mr. Little's office to review this ordinance. And just to give you an idea what the ordinance briefly, very briefly, it's a complete ordinance, but like I said, it's a working document and things have changed over the last couple years a little bit. But it, it addresses issues for the protection of the people of Monroeville, not um, trying to, well, I can, I can tell you that it, uh, we understand that uh, there is zoning laws and rules and we understand those laws and rules, but we're talking about an addition to following those laws, we would like to add some extra protections for the health of the people in Morovo, including in this ordinance, as, as you would read it hopefully, talks about things like impoundments that would be in, involved with oil and gas, setbacks, um, pre and post testing of the air, the surface and groundwater, soil, noise levels, light levels, traffic plans. So pre, by pre and post testing, I mean, we want a baseline before any kind of uh, activity would start with oil and gas drilling, let's say, and I'm mostly talking about unconventional fracking, uh, oil and gas development that's called fracking or horizontal drilling. Um, so you want to have a baseline, so the testing like that, so that we can tell what's going on before it happens, what's going on after it happens, and what are the differences. Um, and something that's not even in our ordinance, that's why I called it a working document, is something called disposal wells or injection wells that most of you have probably heard of. At the time we first wrote this, we were told by industry that Pennsylvania wasn't interested um, in putting these injection or disposal wells in Pennsylvania. Well, as many of you hopefully know, our neighbor Plum Borough, since, because they had nothing in their ordinance about it, had one, they have an injection well now, 
because they can do nothing about it. And a second one is proposed that the council in Plum is now involved with appealing and fighting, basically, because they don't want a second one. But now they've had more preparation. Um, we can be ahead of the game before the first injection well maybe is proposed for Monroeville. Um, so things like that. So what I'm hoping for is uh, for somebody on the council, if that's the rules that, as Mr. Little told me a couple years ago, is that still the case, Mr. Little? Yeah, that's, basically that would be the case, but this would all become before the Planning Commission and even you have a public hearing uh, during the process to, to make your comments. Right. And it's always better, yeah, you are correct to have somebody champion it, you know, on the elected body. Right. So, so that, that's one point. The other point is that I think, I mean, as, as a volunteer in all the groups that I mentioned that I'm involved with, this is completely free. We're willing to work completely, no cost whatsoever, to Monroeville, just trying to make Monroeville a better place for the health and wellness of our, of our citizens. And so I, I guess uh, in addition to getting somebody here hopefully to champion it and, and ask Mr. Little to review the, what you received, um, maybe delay paying a company that I, mean, I know nothing about, but um, over $27,000 to make a review when we're still, we could still work together with the Planning Commission uh, as a citizen, the Planning Commission, the Council, the Mayor, the Solicitor. Well, David, you, you know. make excellent, excellent comments, yeah. and actually I think you're making a good point. And what Council's proposed to look at tonight or considering this evening is to have this outside company review the or zoning ordinance. That doesn't mean that it gets, the zoning ordinance gets approved. So. I think what you're exactly saying is going to happen, and I think that's what Mr. Little was maybe mentioning. Okay. It's if, if council goes ahead with this item on this tonight's agenda, this company comes in and reviews, they may actually put in place some of the things that you're describing. And I think right. that's hopefully, a, that's why I support doing this, because we can get a company that deals with these things and, and to maybe see some long-term things that maybe people weren't thinking about. Right. And uh, But if they don't, there would definitely be time for the public to Add comment okay. for council to, to consider more things in that zoning ordinance. Okay, well that's important. Okay, yeah, so, so don't just, think that this is like if yeah, that's, if if council approves this this evening, that doesn't mean that okay, we're going to get this company and do exactly what they say. Okay, there it's still going to be a working document. Well, that's so, that's but really good I really, to know. Yeah, I think your okay. comments are good though. So I think okay, yeah, David, I don't think we want to delay any longer. We want to get this moving. It's been well, I, I certainly want. Uh, to get this moving, just as, as my example with Plum, they didn't get moving, they have an injection well. Um, we could get moving. But these are the kind of one, things you know. that I think yeah. Yeah, we should be fans. considering as we move right, forward right. on this. So, so can I, is there anybody that's willing right now to, to ask Mr. Little to review the what you got electronically? Well, I don't know if everybody got it, because I didn't receive anything. Okay. So maybe if you just want to maybe start with whoever sent it, if you can make sure, or okay. send it back, make sure do, Mr. Little gets it. Do you still have the copy we gave you? Hey, if it. you send it, it'll, it'll get incorporated into the review process if council in, indeed passes this tonight. Just make sure we get do it. Do that. Okay. okay. You, I, I, only say that because, I only say that because a couple years ago, Mr. you said that you, your office could not review it unless somebody on council asked you. Well, I, I take yeah. the basis of that is I take my direction from council. Right. I don't take my direction from the citizens. And, and that, that's right. Well, that's why I'm asking misnomer. if somebody from council if could a citizen ask, right. comes up here and tells me to do something, yeah. I'm, I'm not, not going to do it well, unless council tells me to do it. David, let's, exactly. how about this? let's start with making sure that everyone on council gets the information okay. before we ask any council okay. members to agree with something that maybe they didn't even review yet. Sure, sure. Okay, because okay. I don't think anybody received it yet. Well, so if you can did, make sure that everybody gets it, that'd be great. Yeah, I got it. I'm, a few people did, oh, but then, I'm, okay. I got it, you got it? I'm checking now, Dan. I'm locked up. Right, oh, whatever reason. frozen up. Okay. okay. Frozen. So, so make sure whoever so didn't get it. Well, actually, can we find out who didn't get it? Is this what you're talking about? Uh, yes, that's the letter that, that, that introduced why we uh, okay. sent you the, the ordinance. Yes, exactly. Okay, okay. we'll try to we'll make, make sure, sure everybody, everybody else gets it. it. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Thank you, David. Okay. I'll leave the floor open for agenda items only. Okay, we're going to close that section. Are you, are you speaking or am I closing it? Uh, I'm giving you a chance. <laughs> yeah, I had asked the question. It, I'm sorry. Georgiana Woodhall. Um, I had asked the question before of the status of the completed zoning ordinance from 2015. And if anything that was being reviewed, if anything had been added to that, um, when it was being reviewed by staff. I can get you a copy, Georgianne. 
uh, a copy of the 2015 <coughs> ordinance? Well, I can, I can get you a copy. You can review it, sure. Okay, we were all given a copy of it in 2015. Okay. And then well, Mr. Wilton has done a lot of work on it since then. Okay. Um, well, right now, I know that the Planning Commission uh, doesn't have, isn't fully um, staffed. I mean, there's not enough members on the Planning Commission at this time. And I know that there were some people that were three individuals who were named to go on to the Planning Commission. Um, and, and I would hope that um, those individuals, when they get on the planning commission, are, are given a copy of the Home Rule Charter, um, that they are given a copy of um, the zoning ordinance, the, they 20, will the 2015 zoning ordinance, as well as um, the Sunshine Act, um, because I know that there was at least one individual that came onto the planning commission and never got a copy of anything. Just sat down at the planning commission and um, and I'd also like to I uh, copied this out of our home rule charter and it is the um, section 1806. And I just want to give everybody a copy of it. A minute. Uh, Thank you. And this is the uh, section 1806, um, and, it, and it is the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission shall consist of seven residents of the municipality of Monroeville. I'm not going to read everything on here, but if you look down to um, E, it says required that the comprehensive plan in effect on the effective date of this charter be retained and the comprehensive plan be reviewed every 10 years or more frequently if recommended by the Planning Commission. Um, it, it just seems like the Planning Commission is being um, kind of left out of it, left out of the process. Right now, there aren't enough members on the Planning Commission, and when they do get on the Planning Commission, um, they need to be, become very familiar with the comprehensive plan, the Home Rule Charter, and the zoning ordinance. And I just think, you know, I mean, I would hope that you would table this with the $27,000 uh, that you want to spend and allow the Planning Commission, the new Planning Commission members, to get familiar with the ordinances before you pay this company um, you know, to, to do the work on it. Uh, you know, I think really it's, it's very premature and, um, you know, it's kind of an injustice to the Planning Commission. It is the job of the Planning Commission to work on the zoning ordinance and the comprehensive plan. Well, it says comprehensive plan in the I, I get that. charter, not but if you, the zoning But ordinance. if you look in the State Enabling Act, and maybe Mr. Ratcher can give us the Well, and they will, and comment. the Planning Commission will definitely be working and on it. And so it is, it is, because we have a planning commission, you know, it would be up to the planning commission. If, if there are cities around the United States that don't have planning commissions. So it is, you know, they've enlarged their uh, zoning offices and their planning departments. Um, but we're, that's not Monroeville. Monroeville has a planning right. commission. And um, I'd also uh, want to ask the question on the um, easement, the 25-foot easement at Alpine Park. Yes. Um, for Sunoco, for um, Sunoco, that monitoring equipment that they're, they're putting in there is that to monitor the pipeline just in Alpine, or is that going to, you know, ha be able to go a distance to monitor that gas line um, throughout Monroeville? Well, it's not a. It's not to monitor anything is to protect the pipeline. Okay, uh, well this is the same pipeline that I have almost 400 feet going across my property um, that was, is now this year in May, I believe, it will be 87 years old. Yeah, so what we're, what council's considering this evening is 
just the section that's in Alpine Park. Okay, do you know, as we stand here, as we speak, um, that there's gas flowing through that line right now? Yes. There is. I mean... You're sure of it? No, I thought you are telling me that. No, I'm asking you because during the seismic testing, I, you know, I had been in contact out of concern because the, get, the age of the gas line, if there was gas flowing through it at the time they were going to do the seismic testing. And I was told by Sunoco that it was, that there was, uh, that it was down for maintenance at that time. And last May, um, you know, I had somebody from Sunoco in my front yard, and when I approached him, I said, what are you doing here? He said, I'm with Sunoco. Um, I'm looking for the gas line. And it's clearly marked by, uh, like, uh, some poles that, are, that have Sunoco on it. So I pointed toward the back area of the property, and I said, is there gas going through that line? He said, no, there's no gas going through the line and there may never be gas going through the line. So when you're telling me this, uh, you know, it's, it's, I'd just like to know, is there gas going through this 87-year-old line right now? Well, for one thing, let, let's stick to the agenda. So are you asking about the section of pipe that's actually going through Alpine Park? That's what we're considering. Is that what you? And is that easement? Because I don't see a lot and block number on here. It just says Alpine Park. And there should be a lot and block number associated with Alpine Park. It's not listed on here. Uh, I'm sure that it would be in the actual agreement, right, Mr. Rasher? Well, it's also there's deed references in here that. Um, oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm just looking at it. what you had on here, you know, and it could, because I had asked you the other night off the record if that only had to do with that specific piece of property. That's what we're or, approving is that or specific throughout piece of the property. municipality. Yeah. Well, uh, I'd really like to know um, if if there's gas going through that 87 year old line. I don't have that answer for you, but we can try to link you up with somebody that does. Well, I mean, I could call, direct, uh, I could call Sunoco myself again, but I, I just assumed that, you know, um, either our manager or somebody would know here. Well, also, too, no, I think I don't, because I don't know. it runs I think, through. But it, I think things, I think gas flows, it stops, it fl I think they change different, they do at different times. I mean, so right now at this moment, I don't know versus what happens a week from now or two weeks ago. I think it's variable. Okay, because back when they came in here in 1989, um, and it's reflected in the minutes from the meetings, and I'm, uh, that's okay, Nick. Um, but there were safety concerns back there, and, and there was, you know, a recommendation meant uh, to condemn that line back in 1989. So here we are now, 2023. I will leave the floor open for anyone that would like to speak about agenda items. Seeing none, we're gonna close that comment period. And I have an executive session announcement that council conducted an executive session before the council meeting on Tuesday, March 8th, 2022, from 6.15 p.m. to approximately 7 p.m. for personnel and litigation reasons. Council legislative action, if any, shall be taken at the Tuesday, March 8th, 2022 council meeting. Council, moving over to the minutes. And everyone has... Um, yes, Mr. Mayor, the uh, council has the citizens' night meeting minutes and the council agenda setting meeting minutes, but they do not have the rest of them, the regular council meeting or the budget hearings. Very good. So it's only the two that they'll be voting on at this time. Okay. Okay. So, thank you, Sharon. Mm -hmm. uh, so the two items, as Sharon mentioned, the citizens' night meeting February 3rd, and the council agenda setting meeting of February 3rd, 2022. Is there a motion to motion approve to those approve. minutes? Second. 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 Any questions, comments, <clears throat> corrections? No. Seeing none, there's a motion and a second to approve. Roll call, please. Mr. Hizzy? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Adams? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Biondo? Aye. The ayes have it. Reports of our tax collections. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Motion is second to approve. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, roll call please. Mr. Biondo? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Adams? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Hizzy? Aye. I'm seeking a motion to approve the list of bills and budget transfers. Motion to approve. Second. Motion is second to approve. Any questions or comments? Yes, sir. Seeing none, motion is second to approve. Roll call, please. Mr. Hizzy? Aye. 
Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Adams? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Biondo? Aye. The ayes have it. And the payroll report. Is there a motion to motion approve? Motion to approve. Second. second. Motion to second to approve. Questions or comments, counsel? Yes, sir. Seeing none, roll call, please. Mr. Biondo? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Adams? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Hizzy? Aye. The ayes have it. And all these items were discussed at our agenda setting meeting on Thursday. Council, moving over to our vacancies on boards, commissions, and authorities. It's the uh, blue section in your packet. Mr. Hizzy, we'll start with you. Do you have anything? I have none, Mr. Mayor. Very good. Mr. Poach? I don't have any at this time. Mr. Stevenson. I'd like to nominate uh, Anthony Pacluza for an uh, unexpired Pacluza. term. That's a, yeah. That's a nomination? nomination yeah. Yes. Very good. And we can, we don't, there's no second necessary for that, nor do we need a vote on that. I would also like to uh, appoint Andrew Wilkins to the Police Civil Service Commission. That's an appointment. Is there a second? Second. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. That's an appointment. Anything else, Mr. Stevenson? No, sir. Mr. Wolfram. I have nothing, Your Honor. Mr. Adams. I'd like to appoint Ronald Massling to the Planning Commission. That's an appointment? Yes. A second. There's a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. That's an appointment. Anything else, Mr. Adams? And also Heidi Lawrence. That, that's an second. appointment. Yes. And a second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. That is an appointment as well. Anything else, Mr. Adams? No, that's it. Mr. Williams? I have nothing. Mr. Biondo? I have nothing. Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> Council, moving over to the consent agenda, new business. 21-8-ST Manila Group LLC Self Storage. Mr. Little, please. Yeah, this applicant is uh, requesting a site plan approval to construct a self storage facility consisting of six buildings with a total of 56,000 square feet of storage space and associated site amenities. Property is located at the intersection of Fry Road and Thompson Run Road and known as uh, tax parcel ID 637J139 in the M2 Industrial Zoning District, and the Planning Commission recommends approval. Council, is there a motion on this item? Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Second. And there is a second. Uh, I'll open the floor for discussion or questions. Uh, Yes, uh, number eight, the applicant agrees to comply with the requirements of the uh, sidewalk ordinance. There's a waiver that follows, uh, so that number eight won't apply. And we'll deal with the waiver when, it, when we get to it. Yeah, Mr. Ratcher, if you could speak Probably to that. Probably be better off to deal with the waiver first, and then we'll know whether or not the resolution needs to include, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Council, let's move over to your resolutions. Item number three, Mr. Little, resolutions. Yeah, that's a resolution approving a waiver, releasing the applicant, Manila Group LLC, John J. and Susan M. Scaretti, from installing sidewalks as required by ordinance number 1016 along Thompson Run Road and Fry Road frontages. So council, I would seek a motion to approve this item. And then if we get a second on that, then we can discuss it. Motion to approve. I'll second. second. We have a motion second to approve. Yeah, Dennis, yeah. Now, Mr. Ratcher, if you could explain this process because we have the sidewalk ordinance, there's a waiver that Everyone, with, everyone that puts a new business in, they're required to put sidewalks in. But we also recognize that sometimes it's not practical based on where the location of the business is. And in the past, people have just kind of asked for a waiver and they've been off the hook. But what we had on, on the books, which wasn't being enacted or utilized, was a sidewalk fund where 
what we look at and what council considers is, is that, okay, here's a new business coming in. They're building in an area where sidewalks aren't really practical or they can't be done. So in lieu of making them put sidewalks there, we're going to ask them through a formula to contribute to this fund so then that way we can use that money to build sidewalks in areas where it is more appropriate near our parks and greenways, things of that nature. So I think it's, a, it's an equitable item in my opinion because you have a business that has to put in sidewalks and now you're letting a different business you know, fall under something different. So it's a way to kind of level the playing field and then the process too. It helps improve the pedestrian safety of our community, and uh, so I'm in favor of that. So we've been talking about this for a few months now, and we're finally trying, this council's trying to get that all ironed out. So, right. Mr. Ratchet, you can just explain the process here, how this works. Okay, so um, in any site plan, there would be a requirement to provide sidewalks. If there is an identified hardship um, that council believes is, in fact, a legitimate hardship, and the developer requests a waiver, the developer can be granted a waiver by council. If the developer accepts the waiver, then the developer is obligated to pay into the sidewalk fund a designated amount based on the lineal feet and based on a, um, a formula that the planning department comes up with. So what council needs to do is determine, first of all, if they think there's a sufficient hardship. If that's the case, this applicant, this developer has requested a waiver. A, an affirmative vote for granting the waiver would excuse them from building the sidewalks, but in that case, they'd have to make the deposit then into the sidewalk fund for the value calculated based on the formula. Okay. Very good. Does everyone understand that? Mr. Williams. Uh, can we ask Mr. Walden to come up and uh, tell us the process and the cost of these sidewalks? We can't, Mr. Wilden, do you have that formula? Uh, already calculated for this item actually uh, it's in your in your packet huh. yes uh, what I did oh well, you can read it you can read it to us I guess <laughs> so they filled out the waiver application and I took the uh, the lineal feet of the frontage along Fry Road and Thompson Run Road multiplied that by a five foot wide sidewalk and used a cost of eight dollars per square foot and came up with $48,000. And that would be the cost of the sidewalk if it was installed without any hardship, without any you know, ex excessive grading or moving, having to move guide rails or anything like that. It'd be like if it was a flat flat surface and they just had to put on straight sidewalk, 48,000. Okay, very good. So, Mr. Weldon, uh, it's, it's not flat property. Correct. And I was over there and some of it could be done pretty easy with some grading and filling, but some of it, be pretty rough. And uh, so the cost would go way up Correct. from that $48,000. And can, can we ask the applicant uh, what he's willing to do in that circumstance? No, there's a designated formula. And the formula assumes that it's flat land, that there's no problem. And I Correct. think that's where the $8 comes from. Well, the $8 comes from, uh, I have uh, cost estimates for all the land development projects that happen in Monroeville. And I took an average of all of, all of those over the last like five or six years, and it came out to about eight dollars a square foot was an average cost. Uh, and even in the uh, the sidewalk ordinance, the, the the fee in lieu, it states in there uh, it has to be calculated as if there were no hardships. Perfect. We, we can't we can't ask them to move a mountain and then pay right. for it. Right. I understand that. Yeah, we can, we can't essentially <clears throat> negotiate above what the formula allows for pursuant to the ordinance. Well, no, no, I, I wasn't suggesting that. What I was suggesting, uh, the $48,000 fee would be a pretty good buy if they if they, if they they went ahead and put sidewalks in, it would cost them a lot more money than that. Y yeah, I'm it's a way to that. Oh, way. absolutely. Okay, yes. now what I'm saying is, I'm for a waiver if the applicant's willing to come up with a dollar figure for the sidewalk <laughs> well, fund. That's, that's, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, I think what we have to we do just can't is ask for okay. more. I think just, we're what if the council wants to grant this waiver, which triggers this sidewalk yeah. fund that we're discussing, it would be the the factors that we just that okay. Mr. Wilden just explained. Yeah. Forty eight thousand is the number. Yes. It's the number. And ultimately it would and yeah, I would agree to your point is that it would save so let's say if council denied this and mm -hmm made them put sidewalks in on their site, it would be a lot more expensive for them to perform that. 
So this is kind of a win-win. Mm -hmm. The applicant saves a little bit of money. The municipality gets sidewalks in an, an area where they could really use them or be, it'd be more logical to use them. And uh, so yeah, I would, we have a motion a second to approve this. I would hope uh, council would, would approve this item. So any other comments or questions, council? Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. So we do have a motion a second to approve this waiver as Mr. Ratcher explained. Roll call, please. Mr. Hizzy? Aye. Mr. Polk? Aye. Mr. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Adams? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Biondo? Aye. The ayes have it. So now going back to our item, item number one, 21-8-ST for the development and to Mr. Stevenson's <clears throat> point, that item would be changed in the conditions. You can strike item eight, item number eight. Right. There'll be no obligation to take care of sidewalks because there won't be any sidewalks. Right. right. Mr. Wielden. Uh, on my way back, the applicant caught my ear. And uh, is there an opportunity for them to make payments or does it have to be paid in full one lump sum? Hmm. Uh, I don't think that the ordinance addresses that. I would say that uh, probably the only thing that could be done is that um, that would be a condition of uh, a condition obviously of, uh, of occupancy permits okay because it would be the site would be incomplete and the way we would normally handle that if somebody didn't put in something they had to put in um, then they wouldn't be able to get an occupancy permit until such time as they did so so I would say if council chooses to they could extend that opportunity to the applicant the ordinance is silent on that fact yeah, I think, I think that's reasonable, almost act as if, okay, the applicant had to put sidewalks in and that in, they, that'd be one of the last things they would do on their project, probably, mm -hmm. is put sidewalks in. So, I mean, it, I think we kind of handle it that way. Mr. Williams. Would that be covered under the bond that they have to put up for the project? What is that, 110% of the project, the bond? Sidewalks are part of the bond, but if we waive, waive it, your well, I, I think you can you can probably bond a required payment to the sidewalk fund. Okay. So you include that in the calculation. You guys have that spreadsheet you always make up, mm -hmm. and and you include the value of the sidewalk fund into that, and it can be made part of the bond. I, I think payments would be good then. But he would still have to. There would still have to be a payment schedule. Is what he's looking for, though. Yes. Yeah. I mean, to put it in a bond guarantees we get the money. But he's still looking for like over a two-year period, or, or and, and I think I mean I think council should pass a motion on that if they want to now, just so it's in the record and put it in a developer's agreement that you know it's over a two-year over a two-year period and, and bonded also or one year whatever. Well, well how would, would it typically be, how would it typically be handled with the occupancy permit? It, yeah. it, let's say well, in, a, in an applicant well, that is putting sidewalks in. Actually, this is something that would be put in the developer's agreement, and since um, uh, since we're saying that that it should be something that he's going to have to do in order to get an, uh, an occupancy permit. So whatever that time period is. And that won't be two years. Um, I would think less whatever. than, yeah, I would think less two than two years. years. Whatever, it's up so. to you guys. We have, I don't recall us in recent memory ever having done that before that. Well, that's Probably why not. we've just started to adhere to the ordinance that we didn't adhere to before. Oh, yeah, in the previous, right. 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 It's just you don't start making money until after the second year. So it takes a year to build it. Is one year long enough? One year's not long enough. Not long enough. Not long enough. It takes a year to build, a year to fill, <coughs> start making money. In the no. Have a microphone. Hello. I apologize for being dressed this way. You, I you're dressed just fine. You're dressed just fine. You, you don't mind my your name for the record, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, okay. well, my name is Chris Scaretti. Chris. Yes. Welcome. Uh, I appreciate you guys listening to me. So a couple of things were very tough on this project. And the cost of steel went up 150 uh, percent. The fact that we were literally taking the site and we're that drained into the creek for 100 years, and we're making it drain backwards, and we're putting a 200,000 toller detention tank in. So it's a very challenging site. Anything you guys could do to help me out, I would appreciate. It. There's no way we could have put sidewalks in here, and if we did, where would they go? We agree with that. So, so we got that much done, and I appreciate that. So the in lieu of is like a, a stinger to me. And I'd like you guys to give me a little help what, what because you it like, takes two years. It takes it takes a year to build the project. Hello. 
and payments I'm talking about. Two yeah, years I'm, enough I'm time? going to say three years. Three years? Yes. Okay. What, what, Mr. Roger, if, if we make a motion to make payments for three years, uh, how, how would we do that? It would, would, and, and give them his auction seat permit as long as the agreement's there and it's a legal document. Is that correct? No, I, I, I don't really think you can do that. I think that uh, you'd be breaching uh, uh, the legal responsibility council has to uh, make developers complete their development. That occupancy permit is the very last thing we have to guarantee that all the improvements are made. Right. We so they have, the to bond, be made, we? they have to be made by then. Now, I'd agree that we, you, you don't have to pay tomorrow. I mean, I, don't, I think that's not fair. I mean, so as far as well, the timeline, I think that we can stretch this out as part, as, as part can, of the project. Can we ask a lawyer what's, the, what's, what's a good way to do this, something that is legal, something that you guys are both covered for? Is anybody no, qualified to say that? Yeah, can't be yeah, there's, really, there's really no way to do it because, in essence, then you'd sort of be financing part of this project. Yeah, so, so I think you can do it. And we can do it in the developer's agreement up until the time he needs an occupancy permit. But there has to be an occupancy permit. At that point, we have to have that, those funds. Can, can we discuss the number then? It's no, no the, the ordinance no, sets the number. number. By that, that's, that's not negotiable. So, so you say it's going to take a year to fill and a year to build it. So that's two years. Well, a year to build it, and then I've got to get my occupancy to start to fill it. You got to so I'd have, to have, I'd have to have this money as I'm building. At completion, before he could start to uh, fill it, utilize operate, the facility, he would have to have the occupancy permit. Right. In order before to fill the property? Before Correct. He, before he could lease any of the lease, space, yeah. spaces. Yeah. Fill, yeah. fill yeah. these yeah. spaces down there. Yeah. Yeah. Dennis, it's your neck of the woods. I mean, I, look, I, I'd be willing to cut. Bob's saying we can't cut him a break on the on the on the. Can't money. change the order. I, I would be willing to do that. Um, I, I don't think there's any reason. Look, this isn't a place where sidewalks are going to go. Um, I mean, personally, I'd be willing to waive the fee. I, I know that's something that we we don't uh, we aren't uh, we haven't talked about doing here. We, we're trying to uh, stick people to make people pay the fee. Um, I don't know what else is going to fill that space. That, that's really that, that's that's kind of where I'm coming from. I mean, where where he's where he's where he's building, nothing else is going there. I mean, where you're in an M2 in an, an industrial area, um, like he said, the site's very challenging. Um, I mean, I mean that's where I, that's where I'm at on it. Um, and, and it's like the land that time forgot. Every every bridge, every everything's a hundred years old. The bridges you can't get trucks underneath the tunnels. The bridges you can't get them across. So everything has to be small. This is very challenging. We're trying to do something with a piece of property that used to be a junkyard. Mm -hmm. We're on the board. It's on the border of Penn Hills right. here too. I mean, you, you, if you're if you're going down um, um, Old William Penn, it's through the tunnel. It's you, you make the right second and right the tunnel. There's 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 nothing there. I mean, and there's nothing going to be there. <laughs> well, Council, there is a motion and a second to approve. I mean. I mean, I, I do, we, with all of we really appreciate people wanting to develop in Monroeville, absolutely. We want to keep kind of things fair and equitable for everybody. Um, you know, I do recognize that things cost money, and it's everything you just outlined. I mean, from building the building, obviously we all know costs are going up for everything. There's stormwater issues. Supply there's sidewalk chain issues. issues supply, right. there's, and, but these are the same issues that every developer has coming into Monroeville. Absolutely. Just now. Just now in the last couple of years. Well, the prices, but as far as all the other requirements as well, oh, as far as starting a business understood. and building a business, whatever that may be. Um, so, I mean, uh, Council, the motion second is to, uh, to with the um, with the waiver part has already been approved. Yeah, I think we're on the development. So now we're talking about the, the development. The development itself. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm going to side with our solicitor as far as the connecting to this occupancy permit. I mean, at least it stretches. Well, you guys the didn't even out. choose whether you're going to do the in lieu of or did we? I mean, that, yes, that's we still did. Yes, 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 we did. Waiver's, we all agree. Uh, waiver's yes, been granted. Waiver's, waiver's been, been granted, granted. Yeah. so you do not have to put sidewalks in. So it's maybe not exactly what you want, but it is saving you money from us saying, you know what, you have to put in sidewalks. Because, yes, maybe this is a spot where nothing else will go there, but uh, that's not necessarily true. I mean, with construction, they can put things almost in any place. Not here. This might you might be right about that. Right. Not here. Because right. the they're going to go right into the creek. Right, but the sidewalk ordinance, why we require developers to put sidewalks in, the I hope understood is long term yeah. is for all for us to build a network of sidewalks throughout the community, something that wasn't done 60 years ago or 70 years ago when everything's really moving along here. But uh, 
but I'm I mean, just asking for some empathy somehow, and I don't know how you all did that. Yeah, and I think uh, connected to the occupancy permit that is uh, that is far down the road. That's probably that's probably about a, close to a year out when it's all said and done, depending on how construction goes. Right. It might be three years out with supply. It might. Well, with yeah. supply, absolutely. Let's say that, please. <laughs> Hopefully, it's not. Thank you, Hopefully, it's not. But council, so we've already you've already approved the waiver, and that triggers the in lieu of payment. Now we are, as Mr. Ratcher said, striking that part of the of the condition from the ordinance. Yeah. So why don't we uh, why don't we entertain an amended motion to strike uh, item eight from the resolution? Motion okay. to second. second to do such to strike item yes. item eight from the, from the. We have a motion and a second for that. Right. Just for that item. Mm -hmm. Post resolution. Yes. Yeah. Roll call, please. Mr. Biondo. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Adams. Aye. Mr. Wolfram. Aye. Mr. Stevenson. Aye. Mr. Poach. Aye. Mr. Hizzy. Aye. The ayes have it. Now there is a motion to second the floor to approve the site plan. As right. amended. As yeah. amended. As amended. Yeah. Right. So there's a motion to second. Any further comment or questions, Council, about this item? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mr. Hizzy? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Adams? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Biondo? Aye. The ayes have it. Mr. Little, next two items. Okay, uh, applicant is uh, requesting site plan approval to construct 791 square square foot uh, drive through coffee shop <laughs> and associated site amenities. The property is located at 2524 Mossside Boulevard. And known as tax parcel ID 857R0446 in the C2 Business Commercial District. Planning Commission uh, recommends approval. Item three is also attached. You want to do these together? Yes, I think we can. Okay. Uh, the item three is the same development. Applicant is requesting a conditional use approval, which we had a public hearing on on Thursday. To construct a 791 square foot drive through coffee shop and associated site amenities. Property is located at 2524 Moss Side Boulevard and known as tax parcel 857R046 in the C2 Business Commercial District. And the Planning Commission recommended approval also for the drive through, and these are items two and three combined. Council, is there a motion to approve both motion of these to items? Approve. Second. We have a motion to approve both <clears throat> items the conditional use and the site plan. Questions or comments? Mr. Williams. Mr. Mayor, at our uh, citizens night meeting, it was stated that it would be a right turn in and right turn out only. And looking at the schematic, uh, there's already a turning lane there. So, so I would like the public to know that it's a full in and out. Uh, and we can ask Paul Wilden that. It's a full service entrance and exit. I think there was a follow-up comment from the engineering firm okay. relative to that. Okay. Um, I, I know that I saw public, an email that I just thought the that public indicated. Thought I, yeah, absolutely. I know that. Sure. And is that that is stated as such in the record? Um, yeah, you might want Mr. Uh, Mr. Weldon to confirm that, but I believe that's what I saw from Morris Knowles, right? Mm -hmm. That is correct. And the applicants here, they can represent if you like. Do you want to confirm that? If you don't mind, just make sure that we are all on the same page. And yes, we did discuss this on at our Thursday agenda setting meeting, and the applicant representation was here. So welcome back. Yes, thank Just you. State your name, state please. State your name, please. Uh, Garrett Barner with Morris Knowles and Associates you. representing GD Development. And yes, it was uh, a clarification. Um, they are full service. We um, later, once we went back, looked at the site and realized there was a left turn lane there. Also, clarification for Bob, uh, the front of the property is 139 feet. 179 feet? 139. 139 feet? Yes. So are both both entrances in in and out? Correct. Okay. Well, there's circulation around that building. you got circulation around that building, so it couldn't be in and out oh, either. Yes, either. yes. There, the entrance in, at the bottom okay. down southern here is, is in. But southern it is, is in? Yes, the southern is out. in and the yeah. northern is out. Yeah. But you can turn left or right into each of okay. into each. So if you're coming down into Moss side, you can make a left in right. to this one. Coming up. And when you're yeah. exiting the site, you can make a left out yeah. of this one. Okay. And staff has no yeah. issue so with it, doesn't have any issue yeah. with that. Okay. No, that, that is how I interpreted it when I reviewed it. Okay. Uh, and then I clarified 
uh, Friday morning after they presented. Okay. And uh, they just confirmed it. Very good. Where are you in your PennDOT approval process? You still in, in yes, we're still being approved. Yes. Okay. And obviously, getting the PennDOT permit that reflects that will be a condition that they'll have to live with. So um, there's no Correct. problem acting on this tonight. Correct. If you're so inclined. Very good. Well, we do have a motion and a second to approve. Any other questions or comments? I imagine that's probably going to be marked right turn only with some kind of sign or something like that, just for the people coming out of there to know which way they can turn. Because like I said, on Thursday or something like that, uh, it's probably going to be crazy going there for a while. But I imagine if they at least they know their sign is supposed to turn right going out and, you know. Yeah. Well, coming out of the northern yeah, entrance, they the can turn left. And there is do not enter signs. Oh, is there? Posted okay. there, so no one can enter the site. Oh, okay. The then maybe I was looking. Okay. Council, any further questions or comments? No. Seeing none, we have both items uh, up for approval with a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Mr. Biondo? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Adams? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Hizzy? Aye. The ayes have it. Good luck with your project. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And our last item of new business, Mr. Little. Okay, applicants requesting a preliminary and final subdivision approval to subdivide tax parcel 741R33, which is currently 57.982 acres, into two parcels. One parcel is 10.4, excuse me, 10.502 acres, and a second parcel will be 47.421. Property is located at 3926 Logan's Ferry Road in the R4 multifamily zoning district. <clears throat> An R2 one family residential zoning district and planning commission has recommended approval. Council, is there a motion on this item? So moved. Second. And that is a motion to approve, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And a second to approve, yes. Questions or comments? Seeing none, roll call please. Mr. Hizzy? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Wolf? Aye. Mr. Adams? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Biondo? Aye. The ayes have it. Moving on to our motions this evening, we have one, Mr. Little. And yeah, the first one is a motion to award the zoning ordinance review request for proposal RFP agreement to Strategic Solutions LLC, that should say through Gateway Engineers Incorporated for the total project sum of $27,584. I'd like to make a motion to the table. Second. We have a motion and a second to table. Roll call, please. Mr. Biondo. Isn't it open for discussion? No, there's no discussion on a motion. On a table, but if yeah. you choose to, you can vote no on the table. No. Council. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Adams. Aye. Mr. Wolfram. Aye. Mr. Stevenson. Aye. Mr. Poach. No. Mr. Hizzy. No. The item is tabled. Mr. Little, next item. Okay, um, resolutions. First, a resolution authorizing the distribution of grant funds for the Memorial Day Parade. This is an annual um, allocation that we give to the uh, American Legion. Council, is there a motion on the motion floor? Motion approved. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Jeff. Motion ahead, second. <laughs> now you Enthusiastically, can. you can both do it. How about that? And Jeff, you go ahead. You're, you're <laughs> dealing with those guys. Sorry. Very good. We, do have a, we have a motion and a second to approve this item. Questions or comments? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mr. Biondo? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Adams? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Pote? Aye. Mr. Hizzle? Aye. The ayes have it. Next item. A resolution of distribution of grant funds for the Monroeville Independence Festivities. Motion to approve. Second. Motion is second to approve. Questions or comments? Looking forward to having a parade this year. Yep. We did have uh, fireworks the past couple of years, but <laughs> actually hoping to get out there in person this year. So we do have a motion a second to approve. Roll call, please. Mr. Hizzy. Aye. Mr. Poach. Aye. Mr. Stevenson. Aye. Mr. Wolfram. Aye. Mr. Adams. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Biondo. Aye. The ayes have it. Item number four, Council. Mr. Little. Yeah, resolution authorizing the display of various event banners at the corner of the intersection of State Route 22 and 48 within the right right-of-way property belonging to the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. Those okay. items, those banners are listed on the resolution for council's review. I make a motion. Second. 
And that is a motion to approve, correct, Mr. Hizzy? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion second to approve. Any questions or comments on this item? Uh, can Mr. Little sort of explain why we have to do this all the time to the, our newer group? Yes, Pen Mr. Dot, Little. Pen well, dot I mean, regulations. Yeah, it's a PennDOT regulation, so we frequently do it yeah. for, we'll see this again at some point, right? And if there's another banner uh, that wants to be added there, other than the ones we have listed on the resolution, all we do is send that in to PennDOT and that is that's happened once or twice we just send it in to pend on they approve it so do, do we have their approval for these now we do yeah. and if somebody come up three four during the summertime and they wanted to put a banner other than the one is we just send them the uh the request for a banner here to pend on and it's usually a resolution here doesn't have to be approved they just approve it okay very good any further questions or comments council Seeing none, we do have a motion and a second to approve. Roll call, please. Mr. Hizzy? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Adams? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Biondo? Aye. The ayes have it. Moving over to our ordinances, we have three this evening. Mr. Ratcher? First one is an ordinance of the municipality of Monroeville, Allegheny County, Pennsylvania, amending ordinance number 2689 to revise the pollution control and flood reduction credit manual rules and regulations. Uh, we did discuss this on Thursday, and I recommend uh, to Council that it remain on the table. We've not received a definitive response back yet from CBL. So we can, so if Council no, no action necessary if Council wants to just leave it on the table. Leave it. Leave it go. I'm seeing no action. So okay. next item. <laughs> next one, an ordinance of the Municipality of Monroeville, Allegheny County, Pennsylvania, amending ordinance number 2754, the 2022 fee schedule, to amend the timber harvesting permit fee to $200 per parcel. Council, is there a motion on this item? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion is second to approve. Any questions or comments? This was designated from state to match what we were supposed to be doing originally? Yes. Yeah, part of our, uh, our, our uh, settlement with the Attorney General relative to that, uh, that statewide ordinance that regulates timbering. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to approve. Roll call, please. Mr. Biondo? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Adams? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Hizzy? Aye. The ayes have it. Next item, Mr. Ratcher. An ordinance of the municipality of Monroeville, Allegheny County, Pennsylvania, authorizing the proper officials to enter into an agreement granting a 25 feet wide easement to Sunoco Pipeline LP to install underground cathodic protection equipment to maintain and protect an existing underground pipeline in Alpine Park. Motion to approve. Second. second. Motion to second to approve. Questions or comments? Let me just, uh, Bob, can you just give us a little of the background on it? Yeah, so there's a there's a uh, there's an underground pipe that uh, that runs through uh, Alpine Park and has been there for many years. And um, one of the ways that the uh, pipeline companies protect these pipes is by putting this cathodic system into it. What it does is it's a, uh, and, and one of the engineers could probably explain this better, but it's, a, it's some kind of a charge that causes uh, uh, less uh, rust and corrosion to occur and degradation of the pipe. So it's kind of a passive thing and they attach wires to the pipe and um, this, uh, this feeds the pipe and obviously keeps it from uh, decaying. And, and they're, they're really, they're probably all over the municipality at this point on the pipes because there are probably pretty of them where, or pretty many of them where we don't control the right of way. So there's been no agreement with us to put this equipment in. Then the hope is the, the cathode degrades before the pipe does. Right. Yeah. And certainly it's, it's good uh, to note that yes, this is Sunoco's pipeline and they are also the ones that are overseeing all this work. So as Correct. far as, gas possibly running through this line. I mean, it's their, it's their pipe and they'll be treating it accordingly. So uh, we have motion a second to approve. I thought we did. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. we, we do. Yep. We, we, we do. do. Yeah, Any we other do. questions or comments? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, roll call please. Mr. Hizzy? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Stevenson? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Adams? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Biondo? Aye. The ayes have it. Mr. Ratcher, do you have anything else for this evening as far as reports? I have one item. I met with a tax collector this week, and um, we are going to embark on a, uh, an endeavor to update the business tax rules and regulations. 
um, that have not been updated since 2005. In that period of time, uh, there's been a lot of state legislation. There have been some judicial decisions. And all of this is aimed at uh, making us to be able more efficiently to collect uh, particularly delinquent taxes. Um, and and the, some of the uh, subjects of who can be taxed and who cannot be taxed have also changed over that time period. So this is, in one way, it's a, it's a uh, it's just a housekeeping item, but it's something that hasn't been done in now like almost 17 years, so it's time. Very so good. we'll be working on that, and I'll be presenting those rules and regulations at a future meeting for Council's approval. And will that be, will it be in the form of an ordinance or? A ordinance, resolution? yeah, ordinance. Okay. Yeah. Very good. That's all I have, thanks. Thank you. Mr. Little. Yeah, a couple items, the same as the uh, work session on Thursday. Uh, as I've mentioned, uh, we're trying to uh, reconstitute uh, getting uh, volunteers for the comprehensive plan that was passed in 2018. Uh, that goes for the elected officials, appointed officials on a planning commission and any residents that want to. Uh, my phone number and my email is on the uh, website. Please contact me. Uh, hopefully we're going we're gonna to try to have a comprehensive plan meeting with, uh, we have a joint comprehensive plan with Churchill Borough and Wilkins Township. And we're going to try to have a, uh, a committee meeting. Haven't had one of those since before the pandemic, maybe in late April. Okay, uh, item number two, uh, household hazardous waste and electronic collection event will be on April 16th at the Public Works building. And uh, suggested registration, which is on our website. And once it again, Monroeville has been named a banner community uh, by the Allegheny County League of Municipalities. Mm -hmm. And this goes for administration, financial reporting, and communication with the public. And there are um, approximately 60 or 70 municipalities in Allegheny County that receive this award. And it'll be a luncheon award at the Allegheny League of Municipalities uh, annual conference at Seven Springs next month. And also, as we were talking about with Mr. Groover here, the president of the Monroeville Foundation, the uh, four events that uh, we're, gonna, we're planning for uh, two th uh, 2022 is Community Day on July 30th, Monroeville Jazz Festival September 3rd, uh, golf finding is September 12th, and the pumpkin race is October the 23rd. And that concludes my report. Thank, Thank you, Jim. Uh, excuse me. Sure. Uh, number two, household hazards, waste, and electronic collection. Is there a cost to the public for that? Yes. Well, there's a cost as far as whatever product or whatever waste they are, paint or electronic. Mm -hmm. it's, it usually goes by the pound or uh, most of the time it goes by the pound. Yeah, just so the public's aware yeah. of it. Yeah, it's on the website. Yeah, it's on the website. Yeah, it's on the website, all the <laughs> rates, and uh, they're on the uh, screen right now. It depends on what, uh, what, what you're turning is. in, yeah. what you're disposing of. Got rid of a television. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Little. Hmm. Mr. Hugis, from the Director of Public Works and Engineering, anything this evening? No. Ms. Rock, anything this evening? Very good. And we're going to open up the floor for public comment <laughs> on any municipal item for residents, taxpayers. As with initially, we always ask to keep your comments to a five-minute period, uh, but this is for any municipal item. So if there's anyone that would like to address council, now would be your time. Good evening. I'm Kim Krivda. I was here Thursday. Um, I'm here to I have a couple questions, and I provided you guys with the information um, regarding the TMB to dialysis um, deed, and then there's an indenture attached to it. I, I don't know if you got, did you guys see this at all yet? Yeah, I saw it. Did you? Yeah. Okay, so the indenture uh, affects the um, property owner at 160 because the, of that drain where we have the overflow. And I provided a video. Now, were we, are we gonna, did everybody watch the video? Mm -hmm. Everyone got Con the Council video. was provided with a video, uh, Kim. Okay, did everybody? Okay, so, so you're not going to show it? No, no. Okay, so then I just want to make sure that it's part of the record because that's what I, you know, I mean, I videotaped it yeah. for that. I want it to be in the minutes and part of the record because the video is very important to me. I didn't go out there at 4 o'clock in the morning for nothing. <laughs> but it's, uh, I'm sure, did, did anybody watch it yet? I did. Yes, you I did. Watched it, yeah. well, it's pretty. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah I watch and that's it. that's a normal thing now. It's like mm -hmm. becoming more frequent right. than not. Yeah, we're gonna have staff have a discussion with DCI okay. to move forward on this. And now, this are they going to provide them with a copy of the, vi the video so I'm they sure can they see? Will. Okay. Yeah, they will. And make sure they do. How will, what, can I ask at the next meeting, or is somebody going to notify us? You know, the property owners there, the adjacent property owners. I think we can reach out. I think if you could be the, the spokesperson, if, you know, we certainly have your information, we can get a hold of you. And if there's something we can talk about okay. publicly at the next meeting, we can discuss that as well sure. at that time. I, I mean, as I'm, soon as we get an update, we can let you know. Right, right. And this is a situation where it's, you know, we get into what's private property, what's Monroeville's property, but we want to, we want to help, well, we want to make this work. They are, they haven't, that indenture puts them responsible, they're, they're responsible for all the way through. And yeah. that's the, the stuff we're trying to. But they, they've never maintenance it until a few months ago was the first time probably they ever maintenance it and i have a company coming out that's uh it's called moody and they're an erosion and stormwater management uh experts so i'm going to have them give myself and the other property owners some idea what it's going to take to resolve this you know and not that i'm going to planning on spending that kind of money but DCI needs to know their responsibility, period. You know, because it's sure causing they, damage. Yes. It's hardships. People are spending thousands of dollars on their property, and it's not doing any good. Can you keep in touch with uh, Mr. Wilton on that, too, so we have some so, okay. feedback from you as well? Okay. And that's pretty much all I have to say. Yeah, and then we're also going to look at even some of I mean, our surrounding storm sewers. I mean, we do look at these things pretty frequently with MS4, right. but, but we'll... Uh, we're going to go through that whole area and see what I think we can the, take care of. Uh, the fact that it's a watershed, I mean, that ground is always saturated. And now that the pond is not properly working, even though they had those guys come out for three days, it's not a, you know, things change over 30 years. It was put in, obviously, in like maybe 1989. I don't know if that's when it was put in, but maybe Somewhere prior to that. There, yeah. But they have to be maintenance. And if you don't, this is the problem that you have. And it's just perpetuating an, a ridiculous amount of, you know, hardship on the on the neighbors. So I appreciate any, you know, we will definitely influence you could have yeah. on that because they're not responsive to us, to be honest. I sent them a video. I went back to look at my emails in 17, in 18, and nothing. Like they go, oh, send me another video when it rains again. Yeah, I'm like, and the municipality is going to reach out to them. Yeah, it's, okay. Yeah, and just for, just for the record so everybody knows, I had a, a telephone conference with uh, Mr. Wilden and Mr. Yugas today, and we talked about some of these issues at length, probably – over an hour, I think. Um, and I understand it better based on the information you provided me. And, you know, one of the things that came out of that is is that we're going to be making contact with DCI probably within the next day or two uh, relative to, uh, you know, to some of the issues down there. So. Right. Okay. Because once it gets sold again, yeah. I mean, that indenture follows that for the life of mm -hmm. the, you know, whoever buys it if they ever sell it. So it's going to be an ongoing problem if they don't completely update the, the uh, system, you know. So, okay, thank you. Yep, thank you. I will leave the floor open. Oh, sorry. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Nina Burdell Vecchio. I have a couple questions on the comprehensive plan. Mr. Little, who is the engineering firm? Is it still Pashik? Nina, just um, just to clarify, though, yes. comprehensive plan or the zoning? The ones? zoning, what okay. we're redoing. We're going to have some meetings and stuff. Who is our engineer that's going to help us rewrite and refunction and and do well, the zones? Nobody and the right now. Well, we had started with Wilkins about when eight years well, ago. If you don't, if I may, let me go ahead. Because we're talking like there's two two different, different plans. Yeah, I know. So the thing you're so yes, the thing that you are mentioning now is our. Joint com our, our joint, joint comprehensive, comprehensive plan, plan. Joint yeah. comprehensive plan. Which, yes. was, which was done between us, Wilkins, Wilkins Township, and Churchill. And Churchill. Right. That was approved by council right. a couple years ago, and that's what Mr. Little talked about in his report as yes. far as getting it back up and running. Right. So That's separate than what the zoning are you, was. I know, but are you going to upgrade with the comprehensive plan because it was all approved? No, approved what, it is, what it is, it's an implementation of okay. the comprehensive plan. So, All right, which there's, there's a whole process that the comprehensive plan lays out on an implementation process on six points that the public, we had two public mm -hmm. hearings, right. that, that the public said that they wanted through surveys that Pashik and Associate did and from the two public hearings right. when we had in Wilkins, I think we had both in yeah, Wilkins. Yeah, we had both up there. And so going through that whole process. Now, we're not going to tackle all six items all at the same time uh, communications 
and Park and Recreation were the two items that we chose mm -hmm. going back to the first meeting we had going back to May of 2018. Okay. We broke off into groups in this building right here, mm -hmm. and we started the process. And then we had another meeting that following fall, and then we didn't have a meeting. Then the, the pandemic hit, and we were going to have a meeting, right. and then the pandemic hit. So the, do, do you need people to help yes. with that? Yes. yes. Okay, now how about um, our, our own personal Monroeville zoning and ordinance? I know the INS are looking for a lot of people on a lot of the committees and stuff. So is there anything open for residents that have done previous work with zoning and ordinance that have done things or offered? On the Planning Commission or on the Zoning Hearing Board? On both. Well, there are some openings. Because there's like one, I think. Well, there, on the Planning Commission, there's yes. openings. There's been some people appointed tonight, and there's been some people that have been nominated. Okay. I don't think there's any openings on the Zoning Hearing Board. Okay. If that answers your question. It did. Thank you. It's right. It's it's on the sheet here. It's on the website. I saw a, it's on the website, it's but on the it website. didn't really say you guys were doing appointments and everything. I knew tonight, and I mean, I've been asked by a lot of you just because of what I used to do in my old life um, that I want to either volunteer, maybe not commit, um, to helping you guys out with anything that I can to make sure. us better here in Monroeville and run a little bit smoother and and accountability is very important in Monroeville right now. So strong council, strong residents make a really good place to live. So absolutely, so we thanks. can definitely get you well, all the vacancies, the positions that are available will be on the website okay. and uh, certainly. If and the new appointments tonight will be on in a couple days, correct? Mm -hmm. Got yeah. it. Yeah, so yeah, the, well, the, I don't know if the names will actually be on the website, but if there was a vacancy that got filled tonight, that it'll get pulled, so it won't be on there anymore. So we'll make sure that's up to date. Okay, thank you, guys. Thank you, Nina. I'll leave the floor open for anyone that would like to address council on any municipal item. Seeing none, Seeing none we're going to move over to our reports of our council members. Mr. I have none, Mr. Starr. You, and I'll finish. Good. Uh, okay, Mr. Poach. Well, to that point, uh, I think uh, what Ms. Becky just brought up too was trying to count uh, on things where we had a number of the vacancies were around 14 or 16. I think are out there too. So please continue to apply. That's, that's a point that we wanted to see for individuals to be involved with it. Uh, item two was from the um, last Thursday. I attended the quarterly. Uh, League of Municipalities and, and count, Borough Councils uh, meeting uh, to do that. And one of the interesting things, uh, last meeting, I believe, when Mr. Little rolled out information on the website that we were having to <coughs> confirm and start moving forward with that, uh, also in, improve our ability to advertise. Um, currently, they're going to push forward to the legislature in uh, around May to do that, to go to the state legislature to give us relief from having to advertise in newspapers. They don't get there. It, it, it's just not really a, a germane to do that. So we can use our website. So the investment we're making in that will be one opportunity to do that. It will be very positive electronically, you know, to do that, to move it forward. So that's an activity that will get things into the 21st century. Yeah. So yeah. for progress instead of a 1940 law from yeah. the state legislature, too. But other than that, that's it for now, sir. Great. Thank you, Mr. Poach. Mr. Stevenson. Uh, yeah, I just have one item. Uh, I'm a veteran. And I just recently found out, and maybe it's because I just wasn't paying attention, but 22 veterans commit suicide every day in this country. That's appalling. I mean, that's terrible. I urge everybody to contact their federal and, and state government officials to try to get something done about that. Nothing's being done. They're just letting, letting these people die. There's men and women both, and, and, and that's wrong. Please reach out, try to talk to somebody so we can maybe get a handle on this. It, it, it makes me sick, and that, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stevenson. Mr. Wolfram. I agree with Mr. Stevenson. I'm also a veteran, so thank you for your service, sir. Um, other than that, I really don't have a report, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Adams. Nothing. Uh, Mr. To be seen Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams. As, as you know, uh, my grandfather <laughs> come from County Cork, Garland. Uh, 
I might look like a leprechaun, <laughs> but don't look for no pot of gold around me. Okay? Where's uh, the gainers? I want to take this opportunity this is a to say happy St. Patrick's Day to my Irish friends, <laughs> and the rest of you can celebrate by drinking with them. Uh, this is a zoning uh, ordinance that we've been working on. Uh, Georgiana, myself, uh, Dennis, uh, come in at the end. Mrs. Meyer was the secretary. Dr. Morganti was involved. And we spent a couple days a week for two years at a meeting uh, to get this thing orchestrated. And we, at that time, we were only a couple months away from, uh, I guess, having public hearings or sending it to the county. And I don't understand why we have to spend $27,000. Uh, I'm wondering if we just can't have public meetings and send it to the county like we had planned uh, 12 years ago. Uh, that, that, that's all I really have uh, tonight. So anyhow, happy <coughs> St. Patrick's Day. Thank you. Mr. Biondo. Uh, yeah, briefly on the point that Bob makes, I, I tend to agree with most of what he said. However, it has been seven years, and it does need updated, and I think that that's something that we should consider and at least discuss um, at the next meeting, um, and I think uh, that is something that, that we should be talking about. Um, on a lighter note, uh, I am wearing green in uh, solidarity with Bob, if uh, <laughs> you haven't noticed. Um, Dennis O. Biondo. <laughs> he, he My better. mother's Irish. He looks yeah. better than me. <laughs> Uh, I do a few things. Uh, Jared, can we do the Easter egg hunt first? Um, there's the, the Easter egg hunt uh, is back. It's uh, in person this year. Last year, I believe, it was drive-through. Um, there's a Get your, uh, your smartphones out for all these items. Uh, I got a few coming up here. Um, and there are QR codes on these. And Jared tells me they work. If you, uh, if you are close enough to the screen, um, you'll be able to sign up uh, for the uh, register for the Easter egg hunt, which is Saturday, April 9th from 10 to 12.30. Uh, the next one we have is the Jack Sedlak Memorial Cleanup Day. Yes. There's a QR code on there as well. Um, that's a really great event. Um, I've done that a few times in the past. Um, it, really, it really does make uh, Monroeville nice. Um, it's, you get all the garbage off the roads that was covered up by the snow over, this, over the uh, winter. Um, gets it looking nice for the, uh, for the summer. And uh, we'll have uh, Mike Adams will be your honorary uh, hot dog, dog cooker. cooker. Ah, Correct. grand. Coming back, bring, um, him back. bring him out of retirement. So uh, that is April 30th from 9 to 11 a.m. Uh, the picnic is, is after, uh, after the cleanup at Monroeville uh, Community Park. Uh, the next thing I have is the, uh, the spring brochure. Um, these, the brochures that used to come out in the mail aren't coming out in the mail anymore. Uh, here we have the cover page. Again, a QR code. Uh, if you scan this, if you're on YouTube, you can pause it and scan the, uh, scan the code. Um, you'll see all of the courses that uh, you usually used to get in the mailbox. Uh, now they're just, it's just online. Um, and again, like I said, you can scan the QR code and um, look at what Monroeville has for you. And then lastly, um, the there's a recruitment flyer. Um, there's, uh, they're looking for course, course uh, instructors. Um, and Rovo's looking for course instructors, certified swim instructors, camp counselors and directors, and lastly, um, office and public works interns. Uh, when I was a kid, I worked at, well, college, when I was in college, I worked for the municipal authority. My brother worked for the municipal and, uh, I, I think it was the municipal authority at the time. I, I was under the water authority. I believe my brother was uh, under the municipal authority. He was with uh, sewer. He did the dye testing. And my sister worked with Paul Hugis in the offices. Um, those are great jobs for, um, for uh, young people um, that are in college. Um, it's, it's great s summer work, and it'll help pay for books. Yeah. Um, and that's all I have. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Beyond. A lot of information, a lot of great events, and no, okay. I think it's a testament to, and I think even Mr. Groover was up here earlier saying about how the Jazz Festival last year is one of the biggest. I mean, obviously, we're coming out of a pandemic. I think people are eager to get out and you know, socially interact again and get out there. So this is uh, a lot of good opportunities coming up here. And, uh, and yes, you mentioned it, but I want to mention it again because I was supposed to do it on Thursday for the cleanup day. Uh, yes, that is the 27th annual, Saturday, April 30th, 9 to 11. You can register through the rec department online and through the QR code that uh, Mr. Biondo just, just explained. But it's always a great event. They pull a lot of garbage out every year. And, uh, and that's the new logo for this year. Mm. So uh, volunteers will receive a T-shirt and entry into prize raffle. So... If you want to beautify your neighborhood, park, school, 
House of Worship or Roadway, tired of litter-strewn streets? Do you want a cleaner community in which to live, work, and play? How can you help? You join the municipality of Monroeville, your neighbors, friends, and family for a cleanup day. So you can register as a group or individuals, pick a spot, and uh, we'll coordinate some of the, the, the worst spots. But wherever you want to clean up, there's plenty of spots, and we really appreciate all the help. But there is a picnic afterwards. Uh, tremendous amount of great prizes. Mr. Sedlak, donations are really coming in. Okay, a lot of, he's saying there's a lot of garbage, so you need a lot of help, and there's definitely, if you, if you sign up, volunteers will get T-shirts and an opportunity for prizes and uh, a good lunch, uh, huh. thanks to Mr. Huh. Adams. Out of retirement. So, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, yes, when Mr. these college kids come out and volunteer, uh, I know for graduation a lot of times they have to have so many hours of public service. Is any of that considered public service, working yeah. for us or uh, cleanup day or whatever? Well, I mean, I, the... Uh, cleanup day and some of those items, yes, and those are things that uh, that I'd be willing to sign off on for any a student that's willing to do that. Um, absolutely. Um, and as far as the the summer helper program, I mean that's after after graduation. Hopefully they already got their hours in and they don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay. But no, absolutely for them to get uh, for students to get their hours for uh, graduation requirements, absolutely cleanup day is an excellent opportunity to do that for them to get some hours. Yeah, there so, you go, good college point. kids. Great. <laughs> Thank you. And with that, uh, motion to adjourn. Is there a second. motion to adjourn? There's a second. second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you and good night. Happy St. Patrick's Day.